and welcome to the big house. Come on in. This is our greenhouse that we built back in the early 1990s. And this house happens to be almost 3,000 square feet. And we do production year-round in this building. So today we're going to do the uh, winter tour. So this is um, early January, and I'm going to show you what we got going on here in January. So if you start here with this first bed, uh, we have these elevated beds. These are constructed of, this is a cement board. And this you use in construction, like if you're building a bathtub, you would use it, um, a bathroom, you would use it around the walls of the bathroom um, instead of drywall. So you get this at the hardware store. Um, the reason we have this raised is so that we can grow at three different levels in here. Our demand for our product is so high that we're like trying to use every inch of space that we have. So on the lower layer down here, we grow, um, these are trays of peas. This one's been sheared. And we grow the peas uh, to put in our salad mix. In the next la layer up, this is where we do our lettuce production. And if you can kind of look down, you can see that there's lettuce in all different stages. When we're growing year round, we, we put the lettuce in what we call perpetual motion so that we are always planting a couple beds a week so that there's always lettuce to be harvested. And then the next layer up, these are our strawberries. We use a day neutral strawberry. As you can see, they are a bit dormant right now, which is perfect. This is where we want them. Um, they will start blooming in March and we'll have strawberries in here by April. So uh, the next thing I want to show you is one of our hothouses inside our greenhouse. And this is one of the ways that we handle seed germination um, in the colder buildings. Uh, this building does not have any extra heat. There's no like propane heaters or anything. So we do run cooler this time of year. Um, our night temperatures in here range from about, oh, about 20 up to about 30 at night. And then during the day, we can hit about 60. So come on down. We'll take a look at one of our little hot houses. This is one of our little hot houses, and this is how we keep our seedlings warm without having to heat the entire building. We found that it was way more economical just to heat these little spaces than obviously this whole big building. So uh, one of the things that we do is we put the heavy frost blanket on to keep it warm. Um, I do have a layer of plastic on, and that also helps keep the warmth in. So if I'm like, if it's a cloudy day, I'll push the frost blanket back, but I will leave the plastic on to help hold the heat in. Um, so we have the plastic. <coughs> and then we have the wire just supports the plastic. And then what makes this magical is the heat system that we have in here. So what we do is we have, uh, this is some more cement bar. Oh, this is nice and warm. Feels great. Um, and underneath, what we did is we took some heat cables that you can get at the horticultural stores. And you can see the blue wire in here. That's our heat cable. And we tied that to the hardware cloth. And then we have the blue board, which is insulation underneath. And so... <clears throat> We have the blue board, we have the heat cables, and then we have the cement board, and this is like a quarter inch thick. And that creates uh, a nice warm spot that warms the soil underneath the plants. And then that also keeps the top of the plants from freezing. So this is a great, very economical way to heat your seedlings without having to pay for heat for the whole building. So super neat system. Um, I have another type of hothouse that I want to show you down here. This is the other hothouse that I have. Um, we built this one so that we can get the tomatoes going like in early February in the greenhouse. And right now I have uh, some lettuce growing under here, but I want to show you how this one is made as well because this is a super energy saver. So the first thing I have on here, these are just some heavy blankets. This is actually a Wonder Window blanket. And we put these on just to help hold the heat in at night. I can run this hothouse, even on the coldest days, I'll still have 60, 65 degrees in here, which is what you need for tomatoes and peppers and things to grow. 
So in the morning we just roll back the heavy blankets and put them towards the back there. And then we have the plastic on here. And the purpose of the plastic is to help hold in the heat uh, during the day, but it still lets the light in. So during the day, the heavy blanks are off, but the plastic is on. Now when the building rises to about 65 degrees, then we go ahead and take the plastic and roll it back. Oh yeah, I can feel the warmth in there. But we're not going to hurt these plants. They're uh, cold weather plants. Okay, so then we can roll that back. And then down underneath here, these are our lights. This is a set of T5 fluorescent lights. And we use these to help supplement the light. When I have tomatoes in here, I like the light to be on for 16 hours a day. So it, it gives that tomato a longer day so they can get into production faster. Um, the other thing we have in here is the heat system. So we have a piece of plastic, and underneath that we have the cement board, just like in the other one. This is another quarter inch cement board. And then underneath that, this is our heat pads. And you can get these uh, online, they're just a horticultural heat pad, and the heat comes through that. And then underneath that we have um, the blue board, just to help insulate underneath. And this system works great. We have such good luck with it. Um, great way to heat the plants in just a little bitty space. Like I say, this is where I can, I can start 300 tomato plants in here and get them going until the greenhouses warm up. So okay, well that is our hothouse. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the heating system that we have for the whole building. All right, so back in the early 1990s, um, we decided to build the greenhouse because I wanted to stay home with my kids and not have a job away from the farm. And so we built this building, this is a big house, and we decided we wanted to grow hydroponic tomatoes. So we got our tomatoes up and running and we had propane heaters in here. And even back in the 1990s, the expense of the propane way outnumbered the number of tomatoes we were getting and we definitely were upside down in the winter time for our heating and what production that we were getting. So we decided we need to do something different so we stopped doing the tomatoes and we went to um, the cold weather crops, the lettuces, spinaches and things like that that didn't require the heat that the tomatoes did and then we also were able to change our heat system so we stopped using the propane for a few years and what I found is that my soil would freeze and I couldn't really crop out even the cold weather plants. And then we heard about the geothermal heating systems that people were using and we made us a little homemade system. So basically what we did is out in the parking lot that's on the other side of the wall back here, we dug a, a big hole that was like six feet deep and we buried a six inch pipe and it's just coiled around in the soil and then the pipe is attached to, if you look back in the corner, there's a fan blowing back there, that white pipe and what the air does is it comes in from the outside, goes down through the soil that's six feet deep, down through the tube and then blows up into the building here and the air that comes in is coming in at about 45 degrees and what that did is that changed the entire dynamic of this building, which is awesome. So it raised the temperature up probably close to 10 degrees at night in here. And now my soils don't freeze and I'm able to crop out lettuce and spinach and other greens all year round without the use of the propane heaters. So that flipped the equation for us to where we could make money in the winter instead of losing money. So this is a really simple uh, design and anybody can do it and it's just a matter of having an air intake um, that's outside the building push the, the air is sucked through the tubing and then is blown into the greenhouse and the other thing that we did is we put a thermostat on the system so if it drops below 45 degrees in the building then the thermostat turns on the fans and the air starts circulating 
And if it's uh, above 45, then the thermostat turns it off so that we can let the sun just naturally heat the building. So super neat system, changed the whole way we were growing and made us profitable.